Remember when Trump made this Twitter post? In reality, they're not after me, they're after you. I'm just in the way. You might think that's just one of Trump's typically hyperbolic attempts to deflect from his critics, but in this case, I think he was right, and I'm gonna show you why. We have marked that there are actually 12 anti-student inclusion groups in the country that are pushing to ban certain books, ban curricula, punish teachers who talk about inclusive education, and generally make our school boards miserable in seeking to provide an inclusive education for all. Literally, everything she just said there is a deceptive lie. Nobody's banning books. You can still get all of these books in a public library or at any store. Yeah, there's certain things you can't put in the curriculum of young children, which has always been the case. People tend to forget that the Democrats led a charge in the early 2000s to remove Christianity and intelligent design from schools. Oh, that was different. These groups include Moms for Liberty, which is the largest group in the country, and we've added those 12 groups to our anti-government groups in our hate list this year. Yeah, fuck you two! These people are insane. I hate to say I was right, but I was. They are literally trying to criminalize their political opposition. According to the SPLC, which is itself a pretty far left organization that once incited an actual terrorist attack on a pro-life group called the Family Research Center by labeling them a hate group. If you are a concerned parent at school board meetings or oppose the woke agenda at all, you're now a far right hate group. They think that they should control what your child learns and have deemed it inclusive despite the fact so many parents feel exactly the opposite and don't think these school boards should be pushing their own personal ideological beliefs. But this is about to get even nuttier when MSNBC brings on a former assistant director of the FBI to claim that everyday local people who oppose their agenda can now be considered terrorists. Because the overall takeaway is that hate is becoming more entrenched. Um, they have gone local. Hate has gone local and the more local it goes, uh, the more mainstream it becomes. It's part of the so-called culture war that they want us to believe is happening, that, that our religious freedoms are being targeted, our children are being targeted, and it's about as anti-freedom as you can be. The state has no freedom to indoctrinate your kids with a far-left ideological cult in the public school system. If you're a left-wing Democrat and you have a problem with intelligent design or Christian beliefs being pushed in the public schools, well, that's perfectly fine. But if you're any other parent and you have a problem with drag queen story time or drag queen adult males, performing for children or far left ideological beliefs like critical race theory, queer and gender theory being pushed on young children in public schools, well, then you're pushing hate and you can be designated a domestic terrorist. I hearken back to decades ago when the FBI and the DOJ really aggressively targeted and, and successfully went after criminally the KKK. And what happened there was they took off their hoods and their sheets and they put on suits and ties. We've seen it before and we we see it now with people who truly are driven by hate and deception running for school board and and elective office and that's where the problem is unfreaking believable this sort of rhetoric from a dead-eyed former FBI director should frighten you because the ultimate purpose is pretty obvious. They're going to label anybody that stands in the way of their agenda as a hate group or domestic terrorist organization. And now with the DOJ being weaponized against the Democrat Party's political opponents, going all the way to the top with Trump and all the way down to concerned parents at school board meetings, you can bet that democracy is actually threatened. All right, folks, hate to leave you with such a gloomy mood on a Friday Day, but I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please hit that like button, share, subscribe, and make sure to leave a comment to vent some of those frustrations. Thanks a lot. I'll see you on the next one.